Hello everyone, this is Second Viewings, and in this video, I'm going to be talking about Man of Steel, a movie that's been on my rewatch list for years. Released in 2013, this movie is about Superman's origins and how he defeated his first formidable foe, General Zod. This is also the first movie in the DC Cinematic Universe. You know, those series of movies that everyone likes to talk about so much. Now, I will be revealing major spoilers throughout this video, so if you haven't seen this movie and you don't want it ruined, then I recommend stopping this video right now. The first thing I want to mention about this movie is that the fan reaction was a lot more entertaining than the movie itself. There was such a divide between whether or not this movie was good or terrible. On one side, you have people saying this is how Superman should be portrayed in modern cinema, and on the other side, you have people saying this is a poorly written movie, the character of Superman is ill-conceived, and this movie is taking itself way too seriously. So what did I think of this movie walking out of the movie theater? I really don't know. I know this movie had mixed reviews when I walked into it, and I know I wasn't enraged that they ruined the character of Superman, but I definitely didn't like this movie either. Maybe it was the story, maybe it was the characters, but I know something didn't work for me. Now, I know it wasn't the tone, because personally, I enjoy the occasional movie that takes itself way too seriously. I heard a bunch of people say, the dark, serious tone should be used for Batman and not Superman. And I disagree. I don't know how it can be done, but I believe that a Superman movie with a serious tone can be done well. The one thing that didn't work for me during my first viewing were the action scenes at the end of the movie. Seriously, how many times can you throw people into buildings and cause massive destruction before it starts to drag and get old? Now, instead of re-watching the movie and forming my own opinion, I decided to watch a whole bunch of reviews, and in these reviews, I started to side towards the this movie is very flawed and I don't see how anyone can defend it. One of the best reviews I saw was done by the Nostalgia Critic and Angry Joe. The Nostalgia Critic was heavily criticizing it while Angry Joe was vehemently defending it. Man of Steel sucks! Man of Steel is freaking awesome and you know it. Yeah, maybe for blood-hungry psychopaths, but for those of us who love an American icon, it's bullshit! This is a new kind of Superman critic. He's obviously not the one we grew up with. Yeah, that one made sense! What, time traveling? Flying around the world? I ended up siding with the Nostalgia Critic more, and I thought Angry Joe was trying way too hard to defend this movie. However, one of my friends who liked this movie saw this review and agreed with Angry Joe and thought the Nostalgia Critic was being way too critical. I thought this was very interesting. So here we are. What did I think of this movie the second time? Oh boy, this is gonna take a while. Let me start off by saying, I don't hate this movie, but wow is it flawed. Okay, where do I start? Well, how about I start at the beginning when Krypton is in its early stages of destruction. Russell Crowe's character Zor-El says all this. We may only have a matter of weeks. I warned you, harvesting the core was suicide. What would you have us do, El? Look to the stars, like our ancestors did. There are habitable worlds within reach. Are you seriously suggesting that we evacuate the entire planet? No. Everybody here is already dead. Didn't he just say that Krypton would have either weeks or days before the planet would be destroyed? Why is he saying it's too late? Also, he just implied Krypton has space technology. I know you're not going to be able to save everyone on the planet, but if it means your species doesn't go extinct, then I think it's worth it to save as many people as you can. Why are these people being so dismissive? Look, I know this is a minor nitpick and I know this movie has much bigger problems, but this seems like such an obvious flaw in the script, and this only makes me wonder how much thought they put into the rest of the story and dialogue. Okay, small rant aside, what do I think of Krypton? Well, generally speaking, I think it's fine. I like the technology, I don't know why they're flying animals around instead of using some flying machine, but you know what, I'll go with it. And I can see how this is an advanced civilization. 
Here's my one personal issue. Remember how Krypton looked in the original Superman movie? It looks like a big giant crystal. So here I am wondering, how does this world work? How does an advanced civilization living on a giant crystal function? But instead we get this. Granted, they could have made the planet look more like Coruscant from Star Wars, and I don't think people would find that nearly as interesting, so you know what? It's fine. I can go along with it. You know what's not fine? The next few scenes after Superman leaves Krypton. Here's the order of these scenes. We see Superman or Clark save a whole bunch of people on an oil rig. We see young Clark have some trouble with his vision. We see older Clark steal some guy's clothes. We see younger Clark save a whole bunch of people on a bus, have a nice talk with his father and find out he's an alien. And then we see older Clark destroy some guy's truck. This got me thinking, what audience was in mind when they were editing these first few scenes? First of all, most people watching this movie are going to know who Superman is. So here we go. Superman's doing something extraordinary. But this isn't going to come as much of a surprise because that's what we expect to see from this character. Here's the problem. Right now, we don't know this specific version of Superman. What life events led up to this point? How does he feel about exposing himself like this? How did he know that he has super strength? Also, I guess this is the baby that we were making such a big deal about in the scene right before this one. Now let's say that someone watching this movie doesn't know who Superman is. This is unlikely, but let's go with it. Would they make the connection that this is the same person? The main hint that they're going to get is when Clark rips off the metal door while he's on fire. The audience is going to know that this guy is extraordinary and... I guess it's not hard to make that connection, but again, they don't know anything about this character. Now, about the bus scene and the talk between Jonathan and Clark Kent. First, we see a bus crash over a bridge and fall into a body of water. Everyone in the bus is about to drown. But here's young Clark, about to save everyone in such a dramatic fashion. Here's the problem. This example is way too dramatic. This is the part in the movie when we're supposed to be debating whether or not Clark should be revealing himself under any circumstance. It seems so heartless to think he should have let every one of those students drown. Couldn't they use a more subtle example like having him stop a car with his bare hands or something like that? As for the scene where Clark is talking with his father... What was I supposed to do? Just let him die? I think this scene would have been more meaningful and less controversial if it was about something Clark really should have avoided. Hearing Jonathan Kent say this... You saw how Pete's mom reacted, right? She was scared of Clark. After Clark did this... just seems so heartless, and I don't blame anyone for having a problem with this, regardless of what the writers were trying to say. So when it comes to how this entire sequence is edited, I think if you play the oil rig scene after all these conversations about the idea of Superman, this shows that he's more concerned with saving people in the short term rather than the long term effects. I wouldn't say this makes his character particularly interesting, but at least you see the natural progression of said character. Maybe there's a method to the madness on how these scenes are edited, but for me, these could have been done a lot better. However, that one scene with Clark and his vision problems... Such yeah, that was done well. Good job. Now, let's talk about this controversial scene. because I trusted him. Now I'll admit, I didn't know what they were trying to say with this scene, but now I do. Jonathan doesn't want Clark to reveal his superpowers to the world despite the fact that Jonathan is going to die. Here's my problem. Couldn't they have found a better way to show this because the way it's shown, it kind of looks like Jonathan has a death wish. In my opinion, Clark should have been the one saving the dog. No one would have questioned it. End of story. So, what do I think of Clark or Superman in this movie? Well, 
I know I'm gonna sound like I'm repeating what everyone else has said, but he really doesn't seem to have much of a personality. Everyone in this movie keeps explaining how important the idea of Superman is in this movie. But you're not just anyone, Clark, and I have to believe that you were... that you were sent here for a reason. All these changes that you're going through, one day... one day you're gonna think of them as a blessing, and when that day comes, you're gonna have to make a choice. A choice of whether to stand proud in front of the human race or not. The only way you could disappear for good is to stop helping people altogether, and I sense that's not an option for you. Not if you give them hope. That's what this symbol means. The symbol of the House of Evil means hope. But I am wondering if there's a defining moment when Superman says, I must use these powers for good! You could say it's this scene. But Clark was already doing heroic actions by this point, and he's kind of going against his father's dying wish. On the other hand, you could say it's this scene. Embodied within that hope is the fundamental belief in the potential of every person to be a force for good. That's what you can bring them. Where Zor-El is telling him what to do. Yep. This is how we're going to portray Superman, one of the most iconic heroes in American culture. Now moving on, what did I think of Lois Lane? Well, I didn't think much of her the first time I saw this movie, and I didn't think much of her the second time I saw this movie. Now, I get it. This is a Superman movie. Lois Lane is going to be there, but if you want to hold off your romance for the next movie, then that's fine. The problem is that Lois Lane and Superman don't seem to have much of a foundation for their relationship. She does some reporting on Clark, which is fun to watch, but there's little to nothing to indicate why they like each other. She does some things for him. I know how to stop them. He saves her every now and then. <laughs> and then we have this moment. Yeah, they did not properly build this up. It's like the writers didn't know how they wanted to handle this relationship. Now let's talk about General Zod and his big evil plan. Again, this character didn't make much of an impression on me. If I'm going to comment on what I thought the first time I saw this, I would only be repeating what I heard from other reviewers. Now that I've seen this movie again, I got me some opinions. First, I have to acknowledge that the writers didn't write Zod as a boring one-dimensional villain. Zod loves Krypton, and he wants to do everything in his power for the betterment of his home world and his people. What are you doing, Zod? This is madness. What I should have done years ago. These lawmakers, with their endless debates, have led Krypton to ruin. And if your forces prevail, you'll be the leader of nothing. Then join me. Help me save our race. We'll start anew. We'll sever the degenerative bloodlines that led us to this state. And who will decide which bloodline survives on? This should make him an interesting character, right? Well, here's the problem, at least for me. When a character is interesting, normally I like them, no matter how horrible of a character they are. Take Lex Luthor in the original Superman movies. He is an evil criminal mastermind who's willing to nuke two areas for his own personal benefit. However, he has such a charismatic personality that he is a lot of fun to watch. I didn't enjoy watching this version of Zod because despite the fact that he loves his home world and his people, he still comes off as incredibly obnoxious and all grrrr throughout his entire performance. I will find him! So, what's Zod's big evil plan? Terraforming Earth into Krypton, killing all of humanity in the process. Now, I understand why they needed to go to Earth. The Kryptonian Kodaks are on Earth. But why do they need to terraform Earth specifically? Why not Mars? Why not one of the few dozen planets you obviously passed on the way to Earth? Everything that made Zod arguably interesting is destroyed because he is committing mass genocide and doesn't need to. Humanity's existence and Zod's love for Krypton can exist separately. All Zod needs are the Codex. So, when Zod takes Superman prisoner here... I have a duty to my people. 
and I will not allow anyone to prevent me from carrying it out. They should have just gone to another planet. Now for something I remembered the first time I saw this movie, the action scenes. You all know my opinion, so what did I think of these the second time I saw them? Pretty cool this time, not gonna deny it. Actually, I kind of expected this to happen because second viewings can really mess with your expectations. If there's a part in a movie that you think is really cool and you keep thinking of how cool that part is, you're probably going to get a little disappointed when you get to said part again. The action scenes in Man of Steel are a way of that working in reverse. Yes, I am well aware of all the collateral damage, and I am aware that these effects are brought to you by IHOP and Sears. And yeah, that's a problem that everyone else has brought up. However, look at this shot. Where else are you going to see that? Don't get me wrong, these scenes drag, and it's still an extremely intense action scene some people aren't going to like. And yeah, Superman is indirectly killing thousands of people, but I have to give credit where credit is due. Okay, I'm gonna summarize the ending because everyone else has talked about this extensively. Superman kills Zod, and I agree with the people defending this. This is a young Superman, and having mental scars like this will cause someone to say something like, I will never kill. Also, the editors are letting this moment sink in, and they are showing you that Superman did not like killing someone, regardless of who he was. Unfortunately, the next scene isn't a follow-up to see how Superman is dealing with this. Instead, we get this bit of ill-conceived comic relief. Are you effing stupid? It's one of your surveillance drones. That's a $12 million piece of hardware. It was. What are you smiling about, Captain? Nothing, sir. I just think he's kind of hot. So that's how I feel about Man of Steel. This movie is definitely flawed. There are many things about this movie that could have been better. The movie is more focused on the idea of Superman rather than Superman as a character. The characters in the story were poorly conceived, way too many things to nitpick about the script, and the movie needed a better villain with a better evil plan. However, I understand why people like it and defend it. Even though I didn't like a lot of the decisions that were made, I wouldn't say they were on the what were they thinking caliber. When it comes to the scenes with Jonathan Kent, General Zod, and his evil plan, and how they portray Superman, I didn't like them. I thought they could have been done a lot better, and many people agree with me. But there are many people who will defend these decisions, and I understand why, and I believe that deserves to be respected. I'm glad I saw this movie again. Anyway, that's my second viewing of Man of Steel. Thank you for watching.